Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 192 for April 15th, 2015. K3LR in the Twit Brick House. Hey, good evening, everybody. If it's Wednesday night and you're watching twit.tv, then it must be Ham Nation night. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. Tonight, uh, Bob is at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention, but we've got uh, the, the standard uh, uh, cast of of uh, fill-ins tonight. We've got uh, Gordo over on the left coast. What's going on tonight, Gordon? How are you? Hey, we are fine. And you know Bob, he'll try and figure out a way to Skype in. And speaking of Skype, you know, Bob and I regularly Skype with different clubs. And next Tuesday, I'm going to be at the Parker Radio Association, Amanda in Colorado. And uh, thanks to uh, Dan Grady, uh, we've got a good Skype call going on uh, this coming Tuesday. So, Don, back to you, and then we'll jump into all that's happening this weekend. Yeah, we've got a lot going on. Also, a little bit, uh, a little bit to my north, we have uh, George Thomas, W five JDX, up in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, is that a hot soldering iron I smell, or, or, or are you just happy to see me? Well, that's not how that, that goes. What's going on? That is a hot soldering iron. <laughs> We're going to be giving it away to now. We're going to play uh, past the hot soldering iron. All right. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, um, I set a new world record here oh about a week ago we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later in smoke and solder though oh, all right good deal we got val at the uh, top of the show tonight uh, as well how are you tonight val hey it's great i i am so glad you mentioned world record because i can you smell this that's a mm. world record right there all right. world record my first world win not only that i got a world record so i can't wait to put that one on the wall so yeah, wow. we're doing good up here, getting ready to go to Visalia. So anybody come into Visalia, make sure you stop by and say hi. I want to meet you guys. All right. I know who else is going to Visalia. We have a special guest tonight, and that is Tim Duffy, K3LR. Tim, how are you tonight? You're in. The, you're already on the West Coast, aren't you? I am on the West Coast here in Petaluma at the uh, home of Twit, and just happy to be here tonight, Don. This is uh, my third trip out here in April to see uh, spring in California and this is uh this is fabulous so just just very very excited to be on the show and we've got a big announcement tonight yeah I was going to get to that we've got a lot coming up we've got uh, we've got Christian uh, as well and uh some more information from from DX Engineering and from Tim but first let's go back out to, to uh the west coast and Gordon and short shots Gordon all right. Well, thanks. You know, this Sunday, as Visalia is slowly winding down, is the ARRL Rookie Roundup. So, Brian, if you want to go ahead and roll the short shots, the Rookie Roundup is for any ham that's been licensed less than two years. And the whole idea is to get them on the air. So if you've got a friend that's uh, recently uh, licensed as a ham, but not more than two years, have them uh, help you put together a uh, stuck antenna element. That's always a good job. Uh, have them do some demoing with APRS. Hey, who says ham radio is old fashioned? Kids love APRS. In fact, we encourage all of you that if you've got some new hams that are gonna come over to your shack, Turn them on to position finding via APRS because it's neat stuff. In fact, there's Don Arnold, W6 GPS, ready to go aloft, squawking his position with a Kenwood D72 on APRS. And 
We need to, as Sam's, factor in on uh, all of these uh, robotics, as we see here, uh, these quadcopters, and uh, that's got five. I don't know what's above five, a sync quopter. Anyway, uh, let's get ham radio aboard and uh, possibly ATV as well. And speaking of going into the skies, that's Clint Bradford, who does a lot of satellite demos, a great way to get more newcomers exercising within that first two years, their ham privileges of being able to work into space. And this coming June, field day, another great opportunity to get more hams, especially young hams on the air. And nothing beats getting new hams on the air as third party. Give them a little 12 volts to work with or a radio that is a local radio. And this will get their interest started. Now, this is Wilson High School. And uh, this weekend for the ARRL Rookie Roundup, both Wilson High School and McBride High Schools here locally will be on the air. Uh, some of these hams that you just saw, they've been licensed for three or four or five years, but it'll be those under two years. And uh, the exchange is uh, the rookies will call CQ Rookie Roundup. And uh, those veteran ops uh, we'll call CQ Rookies. And we'll exchange the call sign of the station we're working, your own call sign, your first name, and the two-digit number of the first year licensed in your state. So get them turned on. This is direction finding, another great uh, uh, skill for kids, and they love this sport. And it's since receiving only, they don't even have to have a ham license. But if you got new kids... Get them turned on to getting on the air, even up as high as 10,000 megahertz. That's microwave that we did last year for the rookie roundup. <clears throat> and that really gets them turned on. And Pacificon is coming up a few more months away, but they've got something great for kids. And here's another trick to get more kids involved in our hobby is get them working kits. This kit building is a lot of fun. You've got an Elmer right there that's going to help uh, uh, do some soldering. <clears throat> Notice they all have protected lenses on. <laughs> Look at that. Now, there is one intent uh, young man uh, putting together a project. <clears throat> I think it's a code oscillator. And, yep, it is. And that's one happy camper <clears throat> to get on the air. And, of course, APRS with balloons is a great way to go. And we have an announcement of the Global Balloon Challenge that's taking part all this month. The Peoria Amateur Radio Club, Peoria Area Amateur Radio Club with Fritz, WD9FMB, uh, is uh, taking to the skies with a balloon. And um, they've got all sorts of uh, demonstrations, but one thing I'm a little worried about is they're going to be putting up in the balloon that's going to go to maybe 100,000 feet, the school's mascot, uh, Wildcat. And, sending, I mean, Wildcat, you're going to, oh, that <laughs> poor kitty all the way up to 100,000 feet. <clears throat> uh, well, we since learned that Wildcat was the motto, not the real Wildcat. So good for Peoria area amateur radio club and the washington gifted school that's working on the global balloon challenge here you see that uh, they're using um, uh, very lightweight styrofoam that's fritz uh, that you see in the center there he's very active with red cross and ham radio and schools and the club and this is a great project and they're going to go up in about a week and a half Depends on the weather. And they're going to be taking part in physics. They're going to explore helium. Uh, they're going to uh, talk about what it takes to launch experiments aloft. Of course, talking about ham radio and APRS. They're going to recharge solar batteries way up at uh, 70 or 80 or 90,000 uh, feet. And uh, they're going to see which ones recharge the fastest. They have a cosmic radio uh, radiation experiment with uh, seeds, noise floor. And um, they're even going to take a marshmallow aloft and uh, see how the marshmallow expands with almost no gravity. 
So this is one of the things that uh, experts are doing, ham experts, to get more kids involved in our hobby. And again, this is Washington Gifted School as the Peoria Area Amateur Radio Club takes him under their wing and sends that mascot aloft, not the real kitty, kitty, kitty going aloft. So it's up to all of us to make ham radio happen, especially with kids. But this Sunday, to get started uh, in uh, getting um, on the air and taking part in the Rookie Roundup, and that is uh, this coming Sunday. Well, let's find out what Tim Duffy is up to. And Tim, I want to first congratulate you on your Dayton Award. And how about giving us an update on all the neat things happening with DX Engineering? So, Tim, over to you. And what's new with DX Engineering, Tim? <laughs> Thanks, Gordo. And uh, thank you very much for uh, mentioning the award. I'm just uh, I'm honored beyond all belief to, uh, to be the... Uh, 2015 Amateur Radio Operator of the Year uh, with the DARA. But tonight, I got big news, and it is, uh, it's been a long time coming, but I'm here to announce that uh, DX Engineering is now carrying Kenwood Radio. So Whoa, um, wow. it, this, is, uh, this is a huge deal for, for DX Engineering. It's a huge deal for everybody else that uh, we, we've got... Uh, the Kenwood uh, brand, and uh, we are uh, just awaiting our first shipment of radios. They'll be in shortly, and uh, hopefully by this time next week, we will be shipping uh, Kenwood radios. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're continuing to build one of the strongest uh, amateur radio companies here in the USA, and we, we've been receiving lots of emails. How come you don't have Kenwood? Well... Now we do. So um, we're very excited about that, Gordo. And uh, I know you've got uh, some Kenwood radios in your shack. And uh, you're always looking for some new ones. They've got some great radios that have just come out. Uh, this is the TS-2000 that you're seeing here. Uh, it's been a very, very popular radio. And we expect it to be a winner at DX Engineering. So what do you think about that, Gordo? Well, I think that is terrific. Well, congratulations on one additional product line at DX Engineering. Hey, Don, what do you think about that, Don? You know, it's been so much fun watching DX Engineering grow. My my radio here in my shack is a TS-2000. And I happen to have in my hands, I have an F6. Great products from Kenwood. I've had Kenwood radios forever. I've I've got Icom, I've got Kenwood, I've got Yezu, I've got pretty much, I've got Alinko. You guys carry Alinko now too. I've got just about everything. And as exciting as it's been for me to to watch DX Engineering grow over the last uh, well the last couple of years, I guess that I've been involved with doing your ads here on Ham Nation and uh, and, and and knowing you, Tim, personally. Um, it's just it's an amazing company, and and you're an amazing guy. And I want to I want to touch back on the 2015 Hamvention. Amateur of the Year um, honor that is bestowed on you. I want to know what was going through your mind when you heard the announcement, when you were told that you would be the uh, the Amateur of the Year for 2015. How, what was what was your reaction to that? I, I'm I'm interested in hearing about this. <laughs> you know, Don, I I have to tell you that uh, having gone to the Hamvention for over 40 years. And uh, having uh, assembled the Antenna Forum there for over 30 years, I was speechless. And um, it, it was a tremendous honor to be selected amongst uh, uh, just a, a lot of people that uh, over the years that have been selected for the, the Ham of the Year Award. So this was, this was a great honor. And, uh, you know, I, I look at these things uh, in the, also for the future, Don, that means that you know, we know what uh, what got us to this point, but let's talk about uh, what I can do in the future to to help this hobby and to help amateur radio grow and to make sure that uh, the next generations get to enjoy all the things that you and I and Gordo and everybody here associated with Ham Nation get to enjoy uh, the, from the frequencies and the friendships and the, the amateur radio clubs and all the good things that are going on in this hobby. So I, on behalf of uh, the, the Dayton Amateur Radio Association that, 
that ultimately selected me and, and whoever it was that nominated me for this tremendous award, I'm very thankful. Awesome, awesome, awesome honor. And uh, we're so proud of you. You have done uh, so much positive things for this hobby that uh, we're just, we're, we're, we're happy for you and we're, we're happy to be associated with you. George, uh, anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, yeah, just just congratulations, Tim. Well deserved. And also, I, I know you are responsible for numerous things there at Deerenham Vention. You want to tell us a little bit about Contest University this year? You know, Contest University is a uh, is a super event that is held the day before the Dayton Hamvention opens up. So it's on Thursday, and it's in downtown Dayton at the Crown Plaza. And uh, we basically take over the second floor of the Crown Plaza with four classrooms that are running nonstop. We start at 7 o'clock in the morning with breakfast. And this year, we're very, very excited that Bob Heil, Dr. Bob Heil, will be in the house and giving uh, his, uh, his seminar on audio and uh, how to make your transmitted audio and receive audio better for contest and communications uh, operations. So this is very exciting for us this year to have Bob associated with Contest University. So our ninth year in, uh, in Dayton, and over 25 different contest universities have been held all over the world, Australia and Russia and Italy. In fact, uh, last month in March, there were over 500 attendees at the Italy Contest University. So uh, we're really excited about this year in particular at Dayton. Signups are way ahead of where they were last year. Um, we expect it to be a, a record-breaking turnout. And this course outline is just out of this world. We have some of the most experienced guys that you could ever imagine giving presentations on every facet of uh, contest operating. And it's a great way, if you're just getting started, to really jumpstart your interest in contest operating. And I can't thank uh, Terry, Kate, MNJ enough for putting together all of these, uh, uh, all of the different sessions that we're going to have and putting together the textbook and uh, I know today she sent it up to the American Radio Relay League um, where we have the textbooks that are published that are used in the uh, in you know Contest University and then ICOM America is also stepping up once again to do a live stream of one of the classrooms all day long at Contest University on Thursday so that you'll be able to uh, go to icomamerica.com and see Contest University live, and then it'll be archived on YouTube uh, so that you can watch it afterwards as well. And all the slide decks from over 20 different presentations will be up there. So, George, it, uh, I know you've been a big supporter, uh, as well as uh, Gordo and uh, Don, and I, I can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done to promote Contest University. Well, it's, of course, Contest University is a great, uh, facet of the hobby it it helps people uh, learn more about that aspect of it but you are also affiliated with another event there aren't you the top band dinner do you want to tell us a little bit about that yeah that's that's a great event this is 26 years in a row that the top band dinner has been held and if you go to topbanddinner.com topbanddinner all all together.com um, 26 years now we've been getting together on Friday night and it is also at the Crown Plaza and uh, here you'll find enthusiasts for the 160 meter band all getting together for a social hour and a dinner and this year we're thrilled to have Bob Offen who was the uh, uh, the leader of Kilo One November and he is the uh, the guy that is going to be the keynote speaker at the top band dinner and so Bob is going to talk about 160-meter operations from Navassa Island, which will be spectacular. And we've got a super surprise. Again, um, uh, as I was leaving DX Engineering yesterday, uh, Kate MNJ was putting the tickets in the envelopes to, uh, to send them out. If you ordered more than two uh, dinner tickets, you'll be getting those in the mail shortly. So it, it's a great event. And uh, I still remember when you and Tommy... Uh, came down and joined us, uh, George, so we hope you come down again this year. Well, it, it was a great presentation that year. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, just for those who don't know, Top Band 
is the 160 meter band which is actually the the lowest frequency band why do they call it the top band tim <laughs> you know i i think uh it it has got that connotation because it is uh on the low frequency band but it is 160 meters so it's it's the at the top of the heap and you know uh that i have a a great love for the top band and and those of us who who grew up working in AM broadcasting, we always felt a special relationship because the AM broadcast band is so close to mm -hmm. the, the top band. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, it is a very challenging band, and the, the, we have a, uh, a whole group of, of fellows there that, and, and YLs and XYLs, too, that, that come in from all over the world that attend that dinner, and uh, it, it's a great night on Friday night down in downtown Dayton at the Crown Plaza. Yeah, they also call that the gentleman's band because it's such a nice group of operators up there on 160, right, Tim? Very, very friendly group, and and you'll find guys uh, standing by and letting uh, you know when the band opens up, um, you know, letting guys go through. And there's a lot of nets. And one of the things that I I have uh, taken a liking to here just recently is AM operations on on 160 meters, and you'll find a lot of broadcast transmitters that have been moved um, up in frequency up in frequency from the uh, AM broadcast band to uh, the 160-meter ham band, and they sound phenomenal on, uh, on 160 meters. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, they do. And congratulations to Terry. You mentioned Terry. Uh, she just upgraded the general, right? She did. You know, 11 days start to finish, and I, I tell wow. you, I've never uh, experienced somebody who was so dedicated to studying um, you know, she's working a full-time job. She's taking care of her household. And, uh, you know, she, she's got a little boy who's nine years old. And uh, she had a lot of support from a lot of people. But she did it and knocked it down and only missed two questions, Don. Wow, she's a sweetheart, too. I, I enjoyed meeting her on my last trip to Dayton. And she's just just the, the nicest lady. One other thing you're involved in, and this is kind of, I, I guess, Neat for me is your uh, your antenna forum because you're bringing Dr. Tamitha Scove to Dayton this year. That, I think, is going to be very exciting because she is not a ham, but yet the, that the ham community, it's, at least the ham nation community, has, has kind of taken her in because she has uh, just an uncanny ability to explain something very difficult to understand, and that would be solar physics and solar dynamics and, and make it to where just about anyone can understand it. And I'm, I'm just so thrilled that, that you're able to bring her to Dayton this year. I really am. That's just the coolest thing. And that's going to be streamed on the ICOM America website as well, right? That, that's right. ICOM America has uh, stepped up once again to make sure that uh, if you can't make it to Dayton, you can see um, all of the Antenna Forum presentations. And uh, Dr. Scove, uh, you know, talking to her on the phone, she, is, she was just so grateful to be invited and, uh, you know, when you originally uh, presented uh, Dr. Tamitha Scove here on Ham Nation at spaceweather.tv and thousands of, of watchers of this show went to her website and also uh, took a look at some of her uh, weekly episodes on what's going on in the sun, she gets it and she knows how to relate it. And so once uh, I... It is going to be an unbelievable packed house on Friday afternoon, room one at the Hera Arena in, in Dayton, Ohio, uh, where Dr. Tamitha Scove will, will give the ins and the outs of what's going on in space weather. And uh, Don, I can't thank you enough for bringing her to Ham Nation. And then I also want to make sure that we thank Yasme. The Yasme Foundation uh, is responsible for uh, bringing her and, and making sure that they, uh, I went to them and asked for a grant, and uh, they granted me a grant to bring wow. Dr. Scove uh, to Dayton, Ohio. So um, I'll be meeting with them here this weekend again to thank them for their forward thinking, and this is a big moment for, uh, for amateur radio at Dayton. Very good. Well, thank you, Yasme, and thank you, Tim, and thank you, ICOM America, for, for, for all of this, and and just, just, it's just, it's just, this is an incredible show. And uh, you're an incredible guy. DX Engineering is an incredible company. And, and this is just, uh, this is going to be an incredible year for, for Ham Radio and for Dayton. And uh, are you going to stick around uh, to the end of the show to uh, take some chat room questions? I think you are, aren't you? Isn't that the plan? 
Oh yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I'm here for the duration. So uh, I, I've just got a date tomorrow morning down in uh, San Jose to go through the surplus stores down there. So oh, there be you go. between now and then, you know, I, I got to go down and get resistors and capacitors. So, but uh, I, I'm here all night, Don. All right. Very good. So uh, Tim's going to be here. We're going to be here, but let's, uh, let's have a word from, uh, from one of our sponsors. And that would be ICOM America. Out from the shack and into the sun. Brighten your day with ICOM's selection of handhelds, mobiles, and HF rigs. Step outside with ICOM's ID51A Plus Digital Dual Bander. Features include free downloadable RSMS1A Android app, near me repeater function for D-Star as well as analog repeaters, and integrated GPS. Hit the road with ICOM's analog IC2730A mobile or the digital ID5100A with internal GPS. Both radios include optional Bluetooth capability for hands-free operation, 50 watts output power on both VHF and UHF, and a large backlit screen for high-contrast viewing. Get mobile with ICOM's IC7100 D-Star radio, which provides multiband and all-mode communications, and an angled control head and touchscreen for user-friendly operation. For solid HF operation this season, try ICOM's IC7600. This rig offers advanced DSP technology and three IF roofing filters, dual watch on the same band, and LED backlighting on an ultra-wide 5.8-inch display. Let ICOM brighten your day with their selection of handhelds, mobiles, and HF rigs. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com amateur today for more information on ICOM's complete line of amateur radio products. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat for some great swag prizes, as well as learn about how you can be entered into the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. The grand prize for April is going to be the ID51A+, Plus, the dual-band, dual-watch anti-talkie with D-Star, built-in GPS, near repeater list up, micro SD card for voice and data storage and data cloning, plus a whole lot more. So sign up and good luck. And don't forget to follow icomamerica.com on Facebook and Twitter. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this and each episode. Enter to win. Somebody's going to win it. Might as well be you. So now let's bring in Val. I, I know, Val, you... You said tonight you needed to be on kind of early because you got something going on in the morning. Yep, that's right. I'm going to meet Tim Duffy and Bob Heil out there in Visalia. I'm very excited to go. It's a it's a big deal, the International DX Convention. And I do want to say um, th uh, congratulations, Tim, uh, on being Amateur of the Year and to Terry on getting her uh, general upgrade. Now, also this week, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I was on the big screen on Monday. No, not that big screen. I was on this big screen. I actually did my first Skype meeting to the USECA group, the uh, Utica Shelby uh, Emergency Communication Group. They actually have over 150 members, really good uh, group. I got to talk about contesting DXing and they were a class act and uh, I appreciate them letting me crash their party. Um, so moving on now, I, I did also last week take my storm spotter refresher course. Now, for those of you who don't know, April is Tornado Awareness Month. And one of the reasons we have the frequencies that we have is because uh, we're there during emergency communications. And one way to show that is to become a trained storm spotter. Now, there, a lot of classes have come and gone, but there still are classes out there. If you want to go to the Skywarn uh, website there, click on your state and try and find and see if there's any classes still going on in your county or in any nearby counties. And they are free and they're about two hours long and you're going to walk out of there a trained storm spotter. Also, your local ham radio clubs have those. So make sure and take advantage of that. Uh, they need as many spotters on the ground as they can get, uh, especially after we just had that big uh, tornado just north of here in Rochelle, Illinois. So uh, very good to have as many spotters as we can out there. Now, as far as DXing goes, uh, this guy, he's going to be there on Fiji through the 17th. And remember when I did that thing on DXing holiday style? Well, that's how you do it. Uh, if you're going to DX holiday style, I think Fiji looks like the place <laughs> to do it. And um, coming up now, we also have um, Norfolk Island. They're going to be active April 24th through May 4th. 
Uh, that is a rare one, and they're going to be active at the time they are because on April 25th, that marks the 100th anniversary of when Australia and New Zealand became active participants in World War I. And that's actually one of their posters from Australia and New Zealand from World War I, which I thought was kind of cool. There's also going to be a couple special event stations out there to commemorate that. One is in New Zealand. The other one's in Turkey because they're commemorating 100 years uh, since they fought a major battle in Turkey. So uh, if you want to get out there and work those guys, and then don't forget Norfolk, which is pretty rare. Also coming up, we have... Lesotho, he's going to be there till the 17th. And if you look at those, the lower left-hand picture, you're going to see some huts down there with red roofs. That is the uh, resort he's staying at. He's kind of doing a tour of Southern Africa. And right now he's in Lesotho. Uh, I know I needed that one. Also, I just got this one this morning. Guinea-Bissau, the next one, Brian. There you go. Um, and he's they're going to be there through the 30th. And that is a very rare one indeed. So if you need that one, uh, uh, make sure you work them before the end of the month. Now, coming up, we also have Spratly Island. They were supposed to be on the air the 14th through the 20th. Um, they're hitching a ride with the military. And they did get waylaid in the Philippines. Uh, but they did set sail today. So Spratly should be on the air tomorrow. Now, I'm not quite sure since they're not getting there till the 16th, if they get to stay until the 22nd or if they still have to leave on the 20th. I have not heard either way on that yet, but uh, look for Delta X-Ray Zero Golf to be active starting tomorrow. And I do need that one for an all-time new one, and I'm sure a lot of you out there do as well. And uh, most likely they will be running split because that is so rare. Uh, also... Um, you know, before, if you wanted to donate to these expeditions, you could do it through the national, the Northern California DX Foundation, and you could have your donation be tax deductible. Well, now you can also do it through Indexa. They just became a 501c3. So any donations you made to Indexa um, or to any de-expeditions through Indexa will be tax deductible. So that's pretty cool. Now, like I said, I'm going off to Visalia. And uh, I know we kind of covered this last week. Uh, they covered that. But uh, it's worth saying, again, the Friday before the DX convention starts on Saturday or Friday night, um, that Friday afternoon, they are going to have a contest academy in DX University. Now, that's only $40. So if you can get there early, uh, you can take advantage of this. And you can swap and back and forth between contest academy and DX University for that same low price of $40. And I will be there uh, to taking advantage of all those wonderful classes that they're going to have. And then, of course, Tim talked about it, the granddaddy of them all that's coming up. Now, they aren't going to take walk-ins. You do have to register in advance. And, and that is the Thursday night uh, before date Hamvention at the Crown Plaza. Uh, they're going to have a lot of great uh, forums or seminars. And your $85 not only includes all those great uh, topics from the creme de la creme of contesters out there. I mean, the who's who of everybody. They're going to have a breakfast with Faye, like you said, a box, lunch, coffee and cookies. And if you get there Wednesday night to get your packet ahead of time and avoid the long lines on Thursday morning, you're invited to their all-you-can-eat pizza party. And uh, just go to contestuniversity.com to register. Also, when you, you do get this packet, I don't know if you, Tim, you're doing the same thing you did last year, but we got a canvas bag. It had a T-shirt, a hat, um, all kinds of um, informational material, your booklet, and as well as coupons and everything like that. So definitely well worth the $85 for all the knowledge you can glean from that. Even if you're not a contester, things on logging, antennas, propagation. I mean, you're going to learn a lot of information on how to make your station the best it can be at Contest University. And of course, we'll all be there. So I always look forward to Contest University. And for those of you newbies out there, I know Gordo talked about this. Um, Get out in the air. If you've been licensed since 2013, 14, or 15, you can uh, participate in the AWRL Rookie Roundup. Now, everybody can participate in the AWRL Rookie Roundup. If you've been lic first licensed since 2013, you can compete. And uh, if you go to their website, they're going to give you suggested frequencies. Start from there. If somebody's on that frequency, definitely work them. And then move up or down 3 kilohertz. 
and until you find an open spot, but keep working people until you find that open spot. When you do, just call CQ Rookie Roundup and give your call sign and wait for people to come back to you. And the exchange is pretty simple. You just need to get their call sign, their name, the last two digits of the year they were licensed, and their state or province abbreviation. Now, if they're outside of North America, you just need to put the letters DX, whether it's Mexico, Japan, or Sweden, you just put the letters DX. And then there, you do the same for them. Give your call sign, your name, the last two digits, and your state. Now, that contest runs 1,800 Zulu to 2,359 Zulu. So uh, it's only six hours. And when you're done with the contest and you're using a logging software, you're going to want to generate a Cabrillo file and send that off to the ARRL. But you don't have to have a contesting software to do this. You can do a paper log in the Rookie Roundup. And then you just need to scan your logs and email that into the ARRL email that they give you in the rules section. Now, once you're done emailing either your Cabrillo log or your paper log, what I want you to do is email it to me as well. Because we're going to do a first here in Ham Nation. DX Engineering has kindly donated a DX Engineering prize pack. Um, and I am going to randomly, live two weeks from today, draw a winner from the rookies who have submitted their Cabrillo or paper logs to me via email. Now, whether you worked 500 people or you tried contesting you worked and only worked five people, you all have an equal chance to win this prize pack, a sports bag, an umbrella, a mug, a pen, and a, a note cube. So a pretty cool prize pack from DX Engineering. And I will draw it live on the air. And make sure when you send me your emails, give me what we call soapbox comments. Give me your comments. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Was 10 meters wide open? I want to know what you thought. So make sure you send that to me, nv9l at arrl.net. Now coming up in the next few weeks, I'm going to be focusing on all the different logging and contesting software out there. Each week, I'm going to feature a different uh, logging or contesting software, whether some will be free, some will be pay, and I'm going to let you know what features they have so you can pick the best logging software that you might want or need. So uh, it's always important to have a good logging or contesting software in place uh, early in your DXing and contesting career, so to speak. So that's all I've got for today. So... Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Don. But Don, am I going to get to see you in a skirt this weekend? Are you going to Visalia? Uh, real kilts? men don't wear skirts. We wear kilts. Oh, Thank you very that's much. What if, if that's the pleats, what I meant. If the pleats were in the front, it'd be a skirt, darling, okay? <laughs> the pleats are in All the right. back. No, right, I wish I was. I'm the plug and I'm going to bed, and I'll see you guys I, in two weeks. I wish I was going to Visalia. Listen, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the Skywarn thing, and with. Of course, me being from Oklahoma, you know, tornadoes are near and dear to my, my psyche. We actually had a tornado warning down here in the New Orleans area today, but it reminded me of, of something that a friend of mine, John Castile, K5POO in, uh, in Garber, Oklahoma, told me a few weeks ago. Now, John and I went to high school together in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and he and I were in a CB radio club back in the mid-70s, 40 years ago. And there was a guy in that club, a ham, uh, his name was Bob Quigley. Uh, WD5 CDV, Whiskey Delta 5, Charlie Delta Victor. He had the idea because we were in central Oklahoma, we were going to make a severe storm spotting net on CB radio. And so we patterned it, or he patterned it after the severe storms net that was on, on the two meter net up in Oklahoma City. Uh, but we did it on CB radio. And we got so good in the three or four years that we did it that the civil defense people were actually coming to our channel to get their information. Now, 40 years later, John, K5POO up in Garber, Oklahoma, went to a Skywarn class with the National Weather Service. And he's sitting in that class. And lo and behold, the meteorologist who's giving the class mentions this group of CB radio operators 40 uh -oh. years ago in Shawnee, Oklahoma, who were doing it right. And it was back before Skywarn was ever thought of. And I was wow. part of that group. And I'm extremely proud of that. A, that CB radio was a gateway drug to ham radio for me because I was studying for my license back then. And B, that that some of the things that we were doing back then um, is still remembered. So just very flattering. And, and the Skywarn is a wonderful organization. If you can get into Skywarn, by all means, do that because yeah, uh, it's, it's just it's, it saves lives. Absolutely saves lives. And the National Weather Service would not be what it is without amateur spotters out there. Uh, in tornadoes and in hurricanes. So definitely get into Skywarn. Right now, though, let's get into the news of the week 
from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1960, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, April 15, 2015. The AWRL has told the FCC that amateur radio and vehicular radar systems can coexist in the 76 to 81 gigahertz band. In comments filed in response to a February FCC notice of proposed rulemaking and reconsideration order, the AWRL has told the Commission that it should make no change in the amateur radio allocation at 76 to 81 gigahertz, nor should it impose any additional regulatory constraints on amateur or amateur satellite uses of the band. In a notice of proposed rulemaking and reconsideration in ET Docket 15-26, the telecommunications regulator solicited comment on issues involving expanded use of various radar applications in the 76 to 81 gigahertz spectrum. This is a spectrum that amateur radio shares with other services. The band 77.5 to 78 gigahertz is allocated to the amateur and amateur satellite services on a primary basis and to the radio astronomy and space research services on a secondary basis. In its comments, the AWRL suggested that the FCC overreached in proposing unjustifiable changes at 77 to 81 gigahertz on its own initiative. Nor was there any suggestion that there is any incompatibility between amateur radio operations and automotive radars. The AWRL said that should there be any unjustified displacement of the amateur or amateur satellite services from any portion of the 76 to 81 gigahertz band, the FCC should allocate equivalent spectrum for those services. The Northern California DX Foundation has announced a grant of $50,000 to the VK0EK Heard Island de-expedition plan for this coming November. In its April 2nd press release, the NCDXF noted that Heard Island has moved up to the number five position on the Club Log Most Wanted list after the recent Navasa Island was completed. Within the last year, the Northern California DX Foundation has given $175,000 in grants to operations in Iran, the Andaman, Navasa, Eritrea, South Sandwich, South Georgia, Chesterfield Islands, and now Heard Island. It will also be lending its support to a yet unannounced de-expedition, which will be in or near the top ten most wanted. The DX Foundation has been doing this for the past 42 years. It adds that the credit for these large grants goes to contributors, individuals, and clubs who believe in supporting it. More is on the web at www.ncdxf.org. Skeeter Nash, N5ASH. What do you get when you take a bunch of hams, sprinkle in a few old Wi-Fi routers, and mix thoroughly with Boy Scouts? Food for the hungry. A small band of amateur radio volunteers in Utah's Salt Lake Valley successfully used a broadband Wi-Fi network set up on the 2.4 gigahertz amateur band to help coordinate the Boy Scouts of America's Scouting for Food project on March 21st. Scouting for Food is the Boy Scouts annual community services event in which scouts collect items for a food bank. Local radio amateurs provide both voice and digital mode communication. This year, for the first time, they used a broadband hamnet system that coupled modified wireless router gear on amateur frequencies to create a peer-to-peer Wi-Fi network to share audio and video over the food bank's location. Broadband hamnet is a descendant of the former ARRL high-speed multimedia, or HSMM, working group efforts, earlier known as the Hinternet. It was pioneered by the late John Champa, K8OCL, and others in the early 2000s. AMSAT has a new book coming out aimed at those of you just getting into amateur satellites. Ghoul Smith, WA4SXM's book titled Getting Started with Amateur Satellites, is being updated to tell you how you can get ready to operate through the Fox 1 satellites launching later this year. Additional chapters in the book tell you about tracking software, orbital mechanics, antennas, radios, Doppler tuning, and operating techniques. Going beyond brief descriptions and ham-fest flyers, this book will provide a complete reference for new satellite users to assemble a basic station and to make your first satellite contacts. It will also explain how to incrementally upgrade a simple FM-only satellite station to include automated tracking as well as operating through the CW and SSB linear passband satellites. A companion Fox 1 reference sheet is also being planned for release. This will be made available for the AMSAT's field operations team for distribution at ham-fests and satellite operating demonstrations. Watch for the 2015 edition of Getting Started with Amateur Satellites book and reference sheet at the AMSAT booth at the Dayton Hamvention and in the AMSAT online store shortly thereafter. Not even a year after Tentec and Alpha Amplifiers merged under the RF Concepts banner, the companies have once again changed ownership. 
RKR Designs LLC of Longmont, Colorado, announced on April 2nd that it has acquired the two brands. RKR Designs leadership includes Ken Long, N0QO, Richard Gall, and Rich Danielson. Long has over 20 years in the electronics and amateur radio industries. He will serve as president and chief executive officer of the new company. Gall and Danielson of QSC Systems in Longmont have been a successful contract manufacturer for over two decades. That company has been building alpha amplifiers for more than five years and boards for 10 tech gear since RF Concepts bought the company last year. RKR Designs LLC is a privately held company. A media release says that RKR plans to expand the product lines while continuing to service their customers. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for over 37 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. For Skeeter Nash and 5ASH, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. And we have no solar update tonight because uh, Dr. Scove had uh, a fairly uh, busy day at work uh, this week. So uh, you should follow her on Twitter, at Tamitha Scove on Twitter. And, of course, check her out at spaceweather.tv. And as soon as she posts something, you'll be able to see it. So uh, we hope to have Dr. Scove back next week. But we do have Christian with us tonight in the New Ham's Corner. So, Christian, what do you have for us tonight, my friend? Don, and you know, you foreshadowed this a little bit with K3LR a little earlier, and then the name came back again, and this name, Terry, this mysterious person. Yes. Who is this woman? And I got a chance to meet her this week, and you know, she was licensed, she upgraded to general recently, and basically takes a no-holds-barred to ham radio. Well, in this week's edition of the new ham, we meet Terry, k 8 M N J. Now, some of us are lucky and fortunate to have mentors or Elmers, as we call them, in ham radio. This one sort of has an Elmer who's a rock star. Okay, let's bring in Terry, K eight M N J. Welcome to Ham Nation, Terry. Hi, Christian. Well, congratulations on your upgrade. You were a technician for a while, and I did tease a little bit. Look at all the beautiful things behind you. There, all the awards, you're sitting in the famous K3LR shack, or I mean, I don't even know what you refer to it. It's a, it's a, an impressive, amazing, famous station, I guess you say. But congratulations first to you on earning your general and tell us a little bit about your experience and your entry into ham radio. Um, my entry into ham radio, I was working for the parent company of the X Engineering and I've been with them for about 15 years when they gave me the opportunity to uh, try my hand at, at buying the parts for, for the ham radio side. So I went ahead and took the leap of faith after 20 some years of just doing automotive. And I wound up in the lap of the X Engineering. K3LR is a famous station. Tim Duffy is who we speak of, the amateur radio operator of the year. Um, how's it like to work with, I mean, you're not starting small here. You're starting at, uh, you know, a million dollar station. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it, it's, it's awesome to work with Tim Duffy. He's, he's been great. He's been very supportive and very helpful in you know, just getting my, my general ticket and, and helping me learn, you know, more about the pieces, parts and the things that I'm doing. I think it's important to have women in the hobby, um, Clearly, you are a woman, and I'd love to have your perspective <laughs> on why are you interested and why should other women be interested in this hobby and service? Um, it's been a lot of fun. Just you know, once, I, once I finally got some seat time and, and sat down and got on the air the first time, I, you know, I was hooked. I, I enjoyed logging. I'd gone to field day for a couple of years, and I just sat while everybody else was on air, and I just did the logging for them. And I enjoyed that part, but I, I've really enjoyed sitting in the seat and, and getting the opportunity to, to get on the air and, and just talk with people from, from different areas, different countries. Is that what you're into mainly? I mean, clearly you're in the right spot, but of course you are working in that spot. Uh, you could have been into, you know, almost anything. Is DX and contesting a passion of yours right now? Um, I guess it's the only thing I know right now. It's, it's the only opportunities I've really had. I, I, I was on, I think, one time and did some rag chewing, but 
for the most part, yeah, it, it's been sitting down and, and doing the DX thing. Tell us a little bit about the countries and the contacts you've made. Um, the day I upgraded, I came back here to K3LR, sat down in the chair, and I worked 82 different countries. I made 100 contacts. Um, oh, wow. Places like Malawi, uh, Japan, Greenland, Turkey, Germany, Italy. How's it work there? Like, I don't know. I'm a hundred watts and a wire guy. You know that. And I'm using a, <laughs> right. a 1978 Drake, which is still beautiful and does me well. Uh, but, you know, my options are limited to the dipole. You're there in sort of candy land in a way in this beautiful place. And you have a lot of options. Do How does it work? Do you switch between antennas? Do you say, I'm just going to run this Yagi? What do you do um, when you're there? Each station has its own antenna. So if you're on the 20 meter, it's it's using its own antenna. If you're on the 15, it's got its own antenna. Speaking of antennas, I hear your Elmer would, you know, like to send you up the tower there. Uh, <laughs> it, did it happen? I know there was talks of maybe getting you up there on the tower. And did you do it? And how was it? Um, it happened. He did. He got me up there. Yesterday, we went up one um, to 40 feet. And I was a little bit unsure about going around, going over the ring. I'm only about five foot tall, so that was a pretty big stretch. So this morning we went up uh, the 160 meter, and I went up 66 feet. That's amazing. That's great. I mean, you're better than me. I think they don't <laughs> want guys like me on towers because I'm nervous and uh, don't look down. But what did you do when you were up there? Did you go for the experience, or did you check? Check a connection. What did he make you do? What is Tim Duffy making you do up there on that tower? Um, first of all, Tim <laughs> Duffy didn't make me do anything up there on that tower. It was it was me. I mean, he he asked. He wanted me to have the full experience, but there was there was no pressure behind it. Um, so we we just climbed up, and once we got up to sixty six, we we hung out for a little bit, looked around at you know just as far as you know all the things you could see. And then we promptly climb back down. And you know I'm just teasing, but l wink your left eye if he really is. I'm just kidding you. What, <laughs> what is your, your favorite band to work? Have you settled into anything that you really enjoy more than, say, another? Um, I like 20. I, I like the 20 meter. That's where, that's where I've spent most of my time. Roger that. I'm from Ohio and... Is there any advice you can give, knowing what you know and getting into this uh, when you did? Is there anything that any advice you can pass on or a little encouragement for young ladies? Um, I say give it your best shot. Don't be afraid. I, you know, I it took me two years to finally decide I was going to try for my upgrade to general. And I sat down and I accomplished it in 11 days. And, you know, I passed with a, with a 94. I missed two on the, on the test. Um, but, yeah, don't be afraid and, and, you know, push yourself. Go for it. Take yourself out of that comfort zone. You never know what you can accomplish or what you can do if you don't. So what are you working for? Our viewers can see everything lined up on the walls behind you, the great certificates and the plaques. <laughs> do you have a personal goal of things that you'd like to do or accomplish first? Um, I want to finish my DXCC. I'm, I think we, we tried last night. The bands weren't real good. We tried. We only probably got another two countries or whatever. So I'm still like 16 away. Um, so I'd like to do that. And I'd also like to try to do work to all state. I hope that we can connect on 20 meters. Let's try to work that out, Terry. That would be great. Terry, K8. M N J congratulations on your upgrade and working in that beautiful station K3 LR you're in great hands. Yes I am. Thank you very much Christian. All right, we'll see you a little bit further down the line. All right. 73 Terry. 73 Christian. You know Don, she's such a sweet lady but yep, I mean she's no joke, man. She's going back. I talked to her today. And uh, she's going to go back up 100 feet up on that tower. So it wasn't just a one-off type of deal. She's going to go back up. And really inspiring, I think, what she can show to younger hams, but especially uh, the ladies. So back yeah, to you. Absolutely. She's, she's just the best. Like I said, I got a chance to meet her last time I went to Dayton. And uh, 
Um, I did not know that she actually had been with the company that long. You know, the, the parent company of DX Engineering is Summit Racing. And if you're a, an, a car racer or a hot rod guy, you'll know Summit Racing. Um, but, you know, I have a 78 Trans Am, so Terry and I have the car thing in common. Something else that we have in common that I, I discovered when I met her is that we're both adopted. And so it, it, she's just, a, she's the coolest thing. And that's what I like about this, about this, this hobby and this service of amateur radio is you never know who you're going to run into or who you're going to talk to on the radio. And yeah, I need to get her in my log as well. So good stuff. Well, speaking of DX Engineering, we've got a word from DX Engineering because they are a sponsor tonight. And of course, uh, you know, we mentioned a few weeks ago now that DX Engineering is an Alinco dealer. And now, of course, the big word tonight from K3LR that DX Engineering is now a Kenwood dealer. Legendary Kenwood performance coupled with DX Engineering superior customer support and blazing fast shipping, and you've got it all. Let's uh, talk about a few of the radios that uh, they're going to be carrying. The TS990S, the ultimate contest and DX transceiver. That's what Kenwood calls it. The best basic reception performance of any radio in Kenwood's TS series. Dual receivers for simultaneous reception on two different bands. Advanced AGC delivers the perfect fusion of analog and digital reception. And, of course, Kenwood Sky Command 2 digital communication system is included. Now, if you want to talk about the 590SG, that Kenwood was, uh, was designed for the most demanding HF DXers and contesters. Highly reliable transmit output, delivers exceptionally good transmit signals, 100 watts of power, 32-bit floating uh, digital signal processing, built-in automatic antenna tuner, beat cancel, CW auto tune, USB and DB9 ports makes this a, an easy radio to hook up to your PC. And along with the radio, you get the Kenwood's own control software and radio host program that will give you voice over internet protocol operation. So that's pretty cool. The uh, Kenwood TM710G is tailor-made for operators looking for high-performance portable digital uh, transceiver. It's a 2-meter, 70-centimeter, 50-watt portable radio. It's in a rugged, compact package. Detachable control head makes it easy to put in your vehicle. It's a true dual band. That means you'll get VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF, and VHF, UHF operation. And Echolink function and built-in GPS make the 710G an invaluable tool for hilltopping and emergency communications duty. That's just the tip of the uh, Kenwood iceberg. DX Engineering has a huge array of fixed, portable, and handheld radios from Kenwood. In addition to the radios, you can also get genuine Kenwood accessories and upgrade parts through DX Engineering. If there's something specific you need, just give them a call. DX Engineering will special order it. And it's a hassle-free process. So go to dxengineering.com slash hamnation. DX Engineering ships faster than anybody else in the industry. You get your order in by 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern. And if it's in stock, it'll be on a truck headed your way tonight. Proven products, expert advice, DX Engineering helps you shrink the globe. You need to get your catalog. Get your catalog. Shop online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. dxengineering.com slash hamnation. DX Engineering, thank you for being a huge supporter of uh, our little program here, Ham Nation. George, uh, smoke and solder. I think what you need to do with your hot soldering iron is is light a birthday candle for uh, for your, your buddy Tommy, N5ZNO. Don't you think we ought to do that? I think we do, Don. Today is Tommy's birthday. I don't know Happy how birthday, old he Tom. is, but... Happy birthday, he, Tommy. He, he's getting on up there, you know. I don't, don't really know how old. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we just... Um, Put out episode 77 of Amateur Logic, and on there I did a, a project called the Sky Pi 40. It's a little 1-watt QRP transmitter that you can build and put on your Raspberry Pi, and it works pretty good. We also talked about the Thumb DV, uh, a new D-Star dongle, and uh, uh, Peter built a GPS that reads out grid squares. So that was pretty neat, but the reason I brought it up as I mentioned earlier, that I had set a new world's record. Well, after um, seeing Val's record there, I'm I'm kind of embarrassed about mine. All I really got was this email here, and somebody scribbled all over it. But it's um, a, a record I set for using that Sky Pi 40 on Whisper, uh, WSPR. Uh, the old record was 6,983 kilometers. I set a new record with it, 7,929 kilometers between W5JDX and DK6UG in Whoa. Germany. And uh, one watt uh, whisper, you know, on an off-center fed dipole cut for 40 meters, it wasn't even tuned that good either. It's like uh, 1.95 uh, 
uh, VSWR. But anyway, that uh, whisper mode goes pretty doggone good, so I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more. But this week I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, I had been kind of cruising around the Internet and uh, ran across a couple of things there. One of them looks like a... A pretty neat little material here. I've got some more of it I need to play with, but let's just take a look now at uh, what I did this week. Do you ever have problems with people pulling the cables out of their iPhone charging jacks or other cables that need a little better stress relief than they have or maybe it needs repairing? Today we're going to look at a material that's great for repairing or making stress reliefs as well as a number of other things. It's called Sugru. It's a self-setting rubber that's silicone-based. Sugru comes in a variety of different colors. The one I'm going to use today is black. Now, because Sugru has a limited shelf life, it's best to put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the object we're going to apply Sugru to is clean, and I'm cleaning off this connector with a little bit of denatured alcohol. And there it is. It basically looks like a... Uh, just a flat black modeling clay there. It behaves kind of like Play-Doh. We'll just knead a little bit of it together here. I'm being careful not to get any in the connector. I'm just going to wrap a little bit right around the wire there. and then up onto the connector and down the wire. And this stuff is supposed to stick onto virtually anything. So once I've got it looking the way I want it, now I'm just going to let it sit over to the side for 24 hours, and we'll come back and see how it turned out. There's supposed to be a lot of different things you can do with this stuff, and... Since I've got a little bit left over here, let's play a little bit. You can make rubber parts out of it or fix things, so I'm going to use a little bit here to insulate the handle of this screwdriver and just see how that works out. Not that I need an insulated Phillips head screwdriver, but I just want to see how this stuff works on metal. Now, I realize I could have done this with a piece of heat shrink tubing, but... We'll just come back tomorrow and look and see how this turned out. Now, I've still got a little of this stuff left over, so rather than let it go to waste on its own, I'm going to waste it here making an S-hook, which I really don't need, but uh, I don't know. We're going to see how it turns out. Now, as long as we're looking at odd things that I found on the Internet this week, let's take a look at this. Here's a couple of EverReady alkaline batteries. Let's measure them. 1.52 volts. That one's not completely new, but pretty close to it. Let's check this one. 1.44. Not a lot of difference between those two. Hmm. I wonder if we can tell which one is which without reaching for a meter. This is kind of hard to believe, but let's take the one that's discharged here. If we drop it, we'll notice it'll bounce and possibly fall over. All right, now let's take the one that still has a good charge on it. It just goes straight down and stays balanced. No bounce. The weaker one? Well, you're saying it's just these two batteries that you've got. Here's another weaker one that I'm going to pull out of my Humanolite. 1.44. All right, same as the other one. Really not super weak like I would hope. Let's see what it does. All right, let's mix them up. 
Now, which one's the one with the best charts? Let's see. I don't think it's that one. I don't think it's that one. It's that one. Oh, yep. man. So how weird is that? Apparently, it's something to do with the molecular structure of the battery as it's become discharged. According to what I saw on YouTube, who knows, but I, I did think it was kind of interesting. It's been 24 hours now, so let's take a look at the results of our Sugro. First, the screwdriver. Well, it just looks like that's rubber around the blade there. It's... Uh, Still fairly soft, but uh, feels pretty durable there. So it'll stick to metal. Let's look at the little S hook that I made. Kind of rubbery, springy. If you pull it too hard, though, it'll pop apart. So I would keep that in mind when trying to make parts with this. Now let's look at our iPhone cable. That's good and solid, and it looks like it's on there to stay, so I believe that will make a good stress relief. So there you go, Sugru. You can do a lot of different things with this stuff, and I've only just begun, so we'll see what else I do with it in the future. Uh, Sugru was pretty nice stuff, and I've got some more. I've got to do some more things. I, I sat down to use it, and I just ran out of ideas automatically. But how about that battery trick there? You know, I, I saw that on YouTube, and uh, my BS detector just went right off. And I said, no <laughs> way. <laughs> but I tried it out, and uh. sure enough, it works. I, I couldn't believe it. But uh, th no, no sleight of hand there. That was, you know, that, that was a real thing. I, I didn't try it with deer cells, though, but uh, I don't have one of them that's run down right now. Maybe in the future. You know, last week I asked a question, what electrical component is used to oppose the flow of current in a DC circuit? And this came from the technician's exam, so it's multiple choice. You had four possible answers, A, an inductor, B, a resistor, C, a voltmeter, or D, a transformer. Well, we had a winner here, and it's uh, George Roberts, ka 2 QYA, and he said the answer is B, a resistor. So congratulations, George. You're going to win this isotip quick charge resoldering, not resoldering, rechargeable soldering iron. And I, I, it looks like it needs charging right now because I did not charge it when I came in. But we're going to send this out to you. You can charge it up yourself, and you'll get a lot of good use out of it. These isotips are are pretty nice. I've used them before in the past, and when you just need uh, to do a solder joint real quick and don't want to wait on your regular iron to heat up, this is fast, and hey, it's portable because there's no cords on it. It's cordless. So we'll get that right out to you. For next week, I've got another question related to what we just looked at. What electrolyte chemical is used in an alkaline battery? And don't tell me alkaline. Tell me, you know, uh, exactly <laughs> what kind. <laughs> if you know the answer to that, I'm going to uh, pick one winner, and they're going to get a copy of Morse Code Breaking the Barrier, a great book by Dave Finley, N1IRZ, uh, courtesy of MFJ. So send your answer to me, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could be next week's lucky winner. Well, I heard Amanda in there, so let's see what's going on in the chat room. Hey, good evening, George, and uh, don't go away. Got uh, one question for you, but first, a couple of announcements. Kevin, K4IVE, just upgraded to Extra, and Brian Smith, KB9RHI, upgraded to General, and KB1VXN, upgraded to General. So congrats, you guys. Can't wait to hear you uh -huh. on your Extra Band privileges. Yay! And Yay. a couple... 
<laughs> a couple more uh, announcements. Des Moines, Iowa, DMRAA Ham Fest uh, this weekend. And also AK400 wants us to know that Tampa ARC is having its spring edition Tark Fest uh, this weekend as well. So you guys, uh, if you're in those areas, be sure to go out there and check them out. It'll be good weather, I think. Um all right, with that, let's get to the questions. Uh, Mr. Duffy, I have some questions for you. The first one would be, can you recommend one of your antennas for a travel trailer? Um, I'm guessing this is, a, yes, it is for HF antennas. And uh, he's looking for a good way to ground it also because he has a mostly fiberglass travel trailer. Ah, yes. That, you know, that's a common problem. And uh, there's a lot more amateur radio stations going mobile on uh travel trailers and uh, the fiberglass can be very challenging uh, a lot of times it's helpful to put uh, some small you know two inch pieces of copper strap uh, down the side and hook on to some of the metal that is underneath that composes the body and at least get uh, you know a low uh, inductance strip down from the mobile antenna I like uh, using the uh, the High Sierra or the Tar Heel mobile antennas. I've got a Tar Heel myself on my vehicle, and it works great. Um, I can go from 80 to 10 meters, but uh, getting that uh, two-inch copper strap down from the feed point down onto the body of the uh, the uh, fiberglass, you know, there's obviously a steel body underneath. Uh, that should do it. And uh, just bond everything together, make sure that all the connections are clean, and he should be good to go, Amanda. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, a couple more questions here. And this is just my personal question. Uh, DX Engineering started selling uh, exclusively the Navasa 5. I was just wondering, what was your feedback from that? How many people um, have worked wonders with it? Can you tell us anything about it? Yes. You know, that is a, a really cool antenna because the boom length is only 12 feet. And uh, JK Antennas is one of the the uh, newer antenna manufacturers on the scene, but boy, do they have uh, a, a great wing antenna with the Navasa 5 because it works all five bands, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters, and you can add six meters on if you want, uh, so you can actually get six bands on it, but it was inspired by the uh, Navasa D Expedition, and uh, we've, we've been selling that antenna quite well it rolls right out the door guys can put it together very quickly it doesn't take a big rotor doesn't take a big tower and it's uh you can put it right on the side of a, a chimney and you get great directivity very low swr across the bands so it's a very very nice antenna amanda to get on hf with a small footprint very good and it doesn't exactly bust the budget for most people there. So thanks, Tim, for that. One more thing, Marty, and I think Marty, and I'm sorry if I miss your age here, I really apologize. I think Marty is 12 to 14 years old. He wants to know what is the easiest way for him to get an antenna to get on 160 meters? Any advice? Oh, yeah. You know, um, I I used to load up uh, my gutters and uh, anything <laughs> I could get a hold of to get on 160 <laughs> meters. Um, because uh, like Marty, I mean, I got started when I was 12 years old. I know Terry, Kate, MNJ, uh, her son is nine years old, Colton. And, and I think he's going to be studying here uh, in the future. Colton's going to be a good ham radio operator too. And I know there's a lot of young folks that, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of money, but you want to get on the, the bands and 160 meters is a great place to be. I, I think the most, um, efficient antenna that you can have and it's very low cost is the inverted L antenna. And uh, you just, uh, I used to use this when I lived in Oklahoma. And uh, I, you know, it's 130 feet of wire and you try to get as much of it vertical as possible. I think I had about 20 feet of it vertical and then the rest of it was thrown over a tree and I had <laughs> four radials. So, I mean, the, the total cost of the antenna was maybe about $15. And then uh, went to Radio Shack uh, at the time and got some coax and uh, I was on the air and I worked 45 states with it with 100 watts and even worked some DX with it. So an inverted L antenna is a great antenna for uh, for 160 meters and there's lots of web links 
uh, for the inverted L. It matches pretty well to 50 ohms, so you don't really need a tuner. Just get 130 feet of wire, get as much of it vertical as possible, throw the rest of it over a tree, even if it has to bend and things like that, and uh, you'll be good to go. And Amanda, I think there was a question about where to find information about the Hamvention activities and forums. And I know that uh, the Hamvention folks are loading all of that up on hamvention.org. So uh, here in the next uh, week or so, we ought to be able to see all of the different uh, uh, forums and activities that are going on at the Dayton Hamvention this year. And it'll be right on the website here that Brian has brought up. That's hamvention.org. So look for uh, all of the events to be outlined there as you get ready to go to Dayton. Thank you so much. And thanks for catching that question. I really appreciate that. So the info is not out there quite yet, but will be soon. Hey, Gordo, I do have a quick question for you. Um, Pierre KD2 EPQ would like to know, um, do the Chinese HTs, are they capable of doing GMRS? Let's see, uh, which type of HTs for GMRS? The Chinese ones, maybe your ah. things or uh, however you pronounce them. I'm not even going to try. Yes, uh, Part 90 radios are for the land mobile radio service, and GMRS is Part 95. But we've seen a lot of these um, uh, Chinese radios just opened up for uh, many different bands. And while it may not be legal, they work quite swell on the GMRS output channels, as well as FRS. But I would recommend stick with a radio that is specifically part 95 to adhere to the GMRS and FRS, including MURS rules. Very good, I appreciate that. And uh, George, back to you in your Sugru. Um, we'd like to know, where do you find Sugru? And if you mentioned that, we missed it. And uh, what exactly is it? It is, um, I don't remember exactly what they called it now, <laughs> self-setting rubber. It's. It feels kind of like Play-Doh. It, it's at sugru.com, S-U-G-R-U.com. It's made by Jane in the UK, and they have um, an office here in the United States as well. You can fix a lot of different things with it. I mean, I've seen them uh, in the demos do shoes and just all kinds of stuff. But it is some type of rubber. Uh, and I also saw some uh, stuff on the Internet where you could make your own using like silicone caulk and cornstarch. But no, I don't think that's quite the same thing as this stuff. It really did make a good stress relief. And uh, I, <laughs> I think I'm going to use it um, for some other projects. But uh, yeah, check it out. Sugru, S-U-G-R-U dot com. Definitely, I will. And uh, sounds kind of like heat shrink, but not quite so much. Anyhow, uh, over to Don. Don, I don't have any questions, but I did take my spotter training last night. Um, it's a, Good for you. It was a refresher course. Not that we have a lot of tornadoes in Colorado, but we have the occasional one. And those thunderstorms and hailstorms that we uh, deal with are quite nasty. So anyhow, hello to that. And you guys, I got my... W1AW right. worked all state. Nice. I worked really hard all last year to get all of these 50 states during uh, last year's contest. Well, no, they don't. They said it wasn't a contest. Okay. Anyhow, that's what I got. Hey, you guys, some great questions tonight. Mr. Duffy, thank you so much for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. I don't know who's closing up this show, but you guys uh, can take it from here. Well, I guess I'll just jump in while we're all here. Uh, it's been a good night. I've been watching my uh, New Orleans Pelicans. They are right now 22 seconds away from going to the playoffs. So <gasps> I'm excited about that. They're beating San Antonio, 104 to 98. Uh, Is this a the, first? So, yeah, for the Pelicans. Yeah, they haven't been to the playoffs in like four years. But anyway, so, kind, of, kind of excited about that. So, yeah, 20 <laughs> seconds away from, I don't think San Antonio can make that many points in, in that little time. But anyway, so... Congratulations to the Pelicans. Let's see. Uh, digital uh, digital Nets tonight, of course. Uh, we've got uh, the Star Dew Drop in Star on uh, Echo. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, Echo Link. What is that? Three five five eight hundred. We've got uh, D Star uh, fourteen Charlie. And uh, where are the uh, where are the the radio nets at tonight? Does anyone know who's 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 on forty tonight? Uh, we're on forty, and I hear them already warming up. 
of five. And Cheryl is going to be on 38.47. And I, as far as 20 meters, I don't know, uh, 14.268, somewhere right around there. And I suspect mm. 20 meters is probably doing 14.283 tonight. Okay. That's, All right. yep, that's what I just saw as well. So. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, we have had we've had an amazing show tonight. We are way long, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. But uh, thank you for for being part of Ham Nation tonight, and uh, hopefully Bob will be back next week. He's at the uh, National Association of Broadcasters convention tonight and wasn't able to Skype in, but nonetheless, uh, he's with us in spirit, and uh, and we miss him, and we'll see him next week. So for all of us here at Ham Nation, uh, I I speak for the group. I, I hope, and uh, we say thank you, seventy three, and thanks for being part of the Ham Nation family. Good night, everybody. Good night.